Hey everybody, um, I am so excited to be premiering my new web documentary series. Um, thank you guys so much for all of your votes and all of your submissions. Um, there were some really funny ones. We, we went a while and kind of picked through them all and whittled them down to those top five. Um, and then you guys voted and you voted for the winner which was Black Tie Optional. So that's the documentary name. And um, congrats to Deb O'Connor for her submission and um, she's going to now get to pick a song title for the album. So um, thank you guys so much for everything. This is going to happen every Tuesday, so keep in touch, keep on board, and here we go. Here's the first one. Going through Pip's music, he has some amazing things. We are right now listening to Banjo Kazooie. Banjo right. Kazooie. <laughs> I think that sound is kind of a, a, a thing that right now in this moment I'm still really trying to figure out. I think my entire life I've kind of had so many influences. I've been that obnoxious guy who literally listens to every type of music that you can be like, oh, you have to have a music you don't like. Like, that's not me. I listen to everything. pretty worried. Um, the thing is, he's so diverse. And, like you heard on the TV show, he can literally do anything. And uh, we used to play, like I said, we used to play coffee shops, um, doing like just purely acoustic things, really soft, stripped down songs, and it totally worked. And we also played with full bands, where we turned everything up as loud as we could and just jammed, and it totally worked. And like when someone's that versatile, it creates a lot of problems in the sense that if you don't necessarily have a direction, that versatility can actually hurt you. I mean, I think that defining a direction for his voice and, like, his talent is, is, is going to be difficult. And if he can do it, then absolutely he'll be successful and it'll sound great and, and people will love it. I know they will. Um, but if he struggles to define that, it's going to be, it's going to be really hard for him as an artist um, to have a sound. Well, I, I'm, I'm really into John Legend right now. Um... I'm really into Florence and the Machine. Oh, this one. I love them. Florence is awesome. I love their lyrics too. Like, I want to write like them. Um, I've gotten really into like old school Justin Timberlake again. Beyonce, The Doors, Flying This Family Stone, Joss Stone, Rihanna. Fun, Lil Wayne, The Rocket Summer, Al Green, The Civil Wars, Stevie Wonder, Shania Twain, Katy Perry, The Beatles, Jump Little Children, Goo Goo Dolls. How worried am I that Pip is going to land on a sound that works for him? 303, Duran Duran, Eric Whitaker, Eric Whitaker, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Ray Charles, Roberta Flack, Green Day. I would say that I'm pretty worried. Boys like girls, aha. Uh -huh. So we kind of stumbled upon this um, this documentary about these five DJs who kind of get paired up with different genres of, of other styles of music, and it's called Regeneration. Yeah, Regeneration was a music project where they got current electronic artists, artists that were doing something that was very new in music on the cutting edge to m match with legends from all different types of genres. Like they had R&B, they had uh, like, a, like a jazz band, they had um, country bands, and they also had uh, The Doors, you know, like really classic rock bands, kind of psychedelic band. I think it was one of the most like inspiring like documentaries slash like just like pieces of film on the music industry that I've seen in a, in a while. And it was really awesome to see kind of how 
in this modern day with all of the modern music and modern technology, that how much of a tool that can be in creating this whole different style of music if you combine it with other things and other elements. And um, I think it's it's kind of something that has inspired me in, in more ways than I thought it would in, in the album making process. And kind of, I, I think we kind of have more of a direction in, in a way, not because of anything specifically in this documentary, but because of just kind of the idea and the concept of making music that's using sort of old school techniques and old school sound and feel combined with these new modern age technologies that, that can make amazing, amazing things that we never had access to or, or the ability to do before. So it definitely was just a, a great thing to watch, I think, especially at this time in my life. Really gotten turned on to the idea of kind of marrying this old style of music with this newer wave of modern electronic music. You know, I think it's something that a lot of people don't do that often, and I think it's something that, if, if done right, can be something really, really rad. this record defines me as being me. I think on the show I got some flack for kind of jumping all around the board and, and not keeping with one specific genre or one specific style and I think that this album really is gonna help define what makes me me and what people can identify with and you know it, it might end up that people who love me on the show don't like the album as much and people who didn't like me on the show actually love the album and you know I think that's kind of gonna have to be another process in this because it's finally going to be people seeing me for what I am musically, stripped away from everything else, stripped away from the judges, stripped away from what people are telling me to sing, what people are making me choose to sing, you know, that sort of thing. And so I think it's really going to be interesting to see the reaction from people of what really is me and what really is my sound and, and what I want to put out in the world. So that's kind of my goal with all of this is to finally give Pip a definition beyond just both time and suspenders. Whoa!